Welcome back, seedlings! Today, I don't just have Andy, I've got Garrett! Hi. Garrett, say hi! <laughs> Hello! Hi, everyone, seedlings! Hi, seedlings. <laughs> uh, welcome to Summer in the Center. <laughs> Fantastic. It's a new version of seed. Yeah, seeds, Summer in the Center. I don't know how I got stuck in the middle, but this is not about me. This is the Andy show today. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. So, I, you know, I, I wasn't even supposed to be in this video. This was supposed to be Andy and Garrett and him, you know, throwing Garrett under the bus or something. And somehow I got sucked in to not just the show, but in the middle. So, I'm just going to, like, lean back and uh, let, you, let you do your thing. Fantastic. Seedling co-host. I have, I have a question. I'm excited to have Garrett because Garrett, Garrett has... Uh, a couple shows that he's on and, and does one of his own is Faith and Freedom, where he's doing a great job of mixing faith and politics and freedom and all this stuff together, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I've had a question for a long time. One, one of the things that has been coming up with this immunization stuff, right, and with all of the, the rules and the regulations and the CDC stuff and all these things, has been like, what's our role as a Christian, mm -hmm. right? Like, when do we just have to be obedient, right? When do we take our beating? And when do we stand up and say, yeah, that's not a beating I have to take. And it's a line super hard and it's getting harder and harder, right? So with this whole immunizational stuff, I wanted to make a word there, right? It, it's, it's been really hard because we have people who would be, who are immunized, who are looking and saying to the people who aren't immunized, hey, you gotta get immunized, you know, you gotta, you gotta do all of this stuff because the government tells us to, and why wouldn't you, and all these things. So there's a passage that I was thinking about uh, in Acts chapter 16, right? Uh, Paul is put in prison, right? And he's put in prison, and uh, they put him in there, and they beat him, right? Uh, while they put him in there. And then he's in this prison, and then uh, 16, starting verse 19, he goes on to this whole thing about how the jailer gets saved and everything, right? Um, I want to pick it up in verse 28, because it says this. Actually, let me do 27. It says, And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and he sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out, and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved in the house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into the house, he met, he set meat before them. He rejoiced, believing in God with all of his house. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privily. Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. The sergeants told these words to the magistrates, and they feared when they heard they were Romans. They, caught, they came, besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. So we see Paul here, and, and Paul's put in prison. And he's beaten, right? God does something great with this. A jailer gets saved. His whole family gets saved. It's all it's one beautiful thing, right? And then it gets to the end, and, and he's released out of prison. But Paul says, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not okay that you beat me, right? I'm a Roman citizen. I, I don't have to take that beating, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's got me thinking about this whole thing. When do we take our beating and look at it and say, oh, look at what God did through it. And we just go on our way quietly, which is what they wanted him to do, right? Go quietly. And when do we make a stand and we say, wait, 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 wait. I'm a United States citizen. I don't have to do this, right? Like, I don't have to just take this beating. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be a line that we're really struggling with in the church. When do we take our beating and, and look at it as God can do something with this. When do we take a beating and say, God can still do something with this, but I don't have to be okay with the beating. 
So that's my question to the two of you, especially when it pertains to seeds, right? The basics. We're taught all the time, just, hey, throw yourself under the authority, do what the authority wants, do all of these things, right? But sometimes, like, hey, listen, what the authority is asking us to do really goes against right what we are who we are as christians so a lot of stuff in there you can go yeah. anywhere that you want with it uh just answer my question please because i'd like life to get a little bit easier today for me <laughs> uh yeah so why was paul initially imprisoned because he was sharing the gospel right which we're commanded to do mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so yeah we have romans 13 and we have um letter from Peter that talks about obeying civil government because um, they bear the sword, uh, punish evil, and, and reward good. But we're supposed to filter that through the rest of the Bible when the government's telling us to do something. Mm -hmm. If it goes against what we're commanded to do as Christians, or if it's something that makes us sin, mm -hmm. then I think we're obligated to disobey. And where this really hit the where this rubber really hit the road during COVID was worship, right? So the the book of Hebrew, Hebrews tells us not not to forsake the the, the gathering and and gather, and and some people took that and applied it to COVID. I I believe rightly, and um, got in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, John MacArthur is still yet to go to trial, but we look north of the border. And we see um, a couple pastors there. I can't remember the other one's name, but Pastor James, James Coates uh, continued to meet with his church and gather, and they threw him in jail for the better part of two months. Yeah. And who knows what he did in jail. Well, I guess I'm I have a pretty good idea what he did in jail. He continued to be a man of God and probably was in there preaching the gospel to the, the guards or, or people, and who knows how... God worked through him and, and um, what's going to come of that. I mean, I think I think we as Christians, whether it's around COVID or just the, the change in, in culture in our country and our world, um, we probably got some, some beatings and some in, imprisonment coming mm -hmm. our way. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this is this is valuable, you know. So let me let me go back to the Canadian pastor you were just talking about because again, we, we like to spiritualize everything and think of everything, you know, make everything okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was asking that question today about whether Elijah was selfish or not when he asked a woman to make him a sandwich. Yep. Right? But in this case, we would we would tend to say, Well, look it, you know, he had to go to jail, but he spent two months getting to witness and minister to people that he wouldn't normally have. So it's a God thing and it's all okay. Look at how God used this, right? Mm -hmm. But is it okay for him to get out of prison and to still say, yeah, no, that was wrong. Oh, absolutely. Just because God does good things with wrong moments, right? Mm -hmm. With selfish moments, does it make it so that we have to take the beating, go to jail, and then come out going, oh, look at what God did. It was all okay. It's all great. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all wonderful. Well, they, he, he didn't. They let him out um, and said, you know, we're going to let you out. Don't, don't keep gathering with your church. And, you know, they, they, uh, they put the Canadian government put a fence around his property, around his church. So they said, okay, fine, we'll just uh, we'll meet at people's houses, or we'll find you know different places. They kind of went um, underground, but I don't think he ever validated um, the Canadian authorities. Um, he just kept. He just kept preaching. Uh, I, I'd have to look back on what he said to see if he actually said, you know, what happened to me was was wrong, and I didn't deserve that. I mean, I, I think, you know, that's part of standing on the truth as Christians is saying, okay, you, this happened to me, and, and the, the people that did that were, were out of line. And he, he preached a great sermon on Romans 13 the day he knew he was going to get locked up. Yeah. Like, they, they took him to prison... I think after the Sunday service and he knew it was going to happen. So he preached on Romans 13 mm -hmm. and the role of civil authorities and how, yes, we should obey them, but they, they are under God. God put them there so they can either rule in a godly fashion, uh, according to God's will and God's word, or they can step out in, in rule under the flesh and, and sinfully. So, so to both of you, 
because some are sitting very quietly, mm, right? I love it. I know she has lots to say. <laughs> but to both of you, is it, in, in this moment that we're in, right, is it wrong for Christians who have decided, hey, for whatever the case, I'm not okay with just blindly getting an immunization, mm-hmm. right? I, like, I, whatever. You, there's tons of different reasons to not get it. But is it wrong for people to resist that right now and say, I'm not, I'm not going to get this? Or are we doing wrong because our authority has told us, hey, for the betterment of everybody, you need to get this? No way. No, I, I think this is my body right like there's there's listening to your authority and there's and again it does tell you to do that and we do and i've preached that to people like you sorry you don't like the rules but if they say we're gonna wear a mask we're gonna wear a mask we're gonna do these things and whatever but like you said in the beginning there is a line with what god tells you to do right and god's very clear about your body and your temple and things and I don't know. I, I, I'm not I'm not okay with people just blindly injecting me with things and saying, Well here, like you're just gonna have this and you just trust me what's in it and like um like nope and I, there's a lot of people that'll go through the scripture and, and dissect the pharmacia and the sorcery aspect of it and say all medicine is evil in Mm. the eyes of god which you can go down that crazy route which maybe maybe not i don't know i i think everybody has to pray about it i think everybody has to listen to the holy spirit i think you have to do what you think the lord is telling you to do but i think we need to be really careful i think we need to be super careful like it just doesn't make sense it doesn't it doesn't fit like why why such a big push to re- to require every single person to have something like that that doesn't even do what you're saying it does that makes me right there believe that I, there's something else in it there's some other agenda there's some other reason because it's not even doing what you say it's supposed to do so absolutely not you are not getting it you'd have to tie me down and and force it on me i think we're long way away from that but i think what i'm we saying are, that's what it would take for yeah, me i'm not yep. doing it but what, what we are seeing is 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 people's livelihoods being held yeah. over their head well that's it. it's in here mm-hmm. yep right like god said yep i mean if you want to get real crazy and talk about the mark of the beast so yeah i guess that's kind of what andy's getting to like mm-hmm. is when it comes down to get the vaccine or lose your job that supports your family um sounds familiar what, what choice do we make as as Christians? And I, I I I think there's liberty for Christians in either one of those. But I think if uh you know if it were me personally, um and, and that were the situation, I would say uh, just on principle because I feel like Summer said that it's it's my body and I don't think anyone should either force or coerce me in, into putting anything in it. I would say okay, well let the let the consequences of, of that decision come and trust that God will provide another opportunity, 100%. hopefully, um, to, to find a way to sustain um, my, my family and my income. No, he will. If you make a decision absolutely for him, because of him, because of your faith, because of your principles in his word, there's, there's no way he's going to let your family fall on his face. Like, that's just not going to happen. I, I won't say maybe. I say he absolutely will. It might not look like a normal standard job, a normal standard income. But I guarantee you, he says, food and shelter and clothing you will have. You don't have to worry. You might not have extra. Mm-hmm. But you'll have food and you'll have shelter and you'll have clothing. And he will give that to you if you are obedient to him. If you choose the world, you choose that path, you're on your own. It's funny how, like, when we're in college, we go back to the, you know, ramen, ramen noodle, world, <laughs> right? Oh, and I didn't have that. I didn't go to college. Hallelujah. God, God <laughs> provided, right? When, when we're in when the beginning stages, you know, with your first married or whatever, and you're just trying to make it. It's yeah. funny how casseroles and all kinds of things, you know, things that you can have for days come into play. And then we, then, then we get a place where all of a sudden, hey, we can go out to eat every once in a while. We can do all these things, right? Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, we forget, like, God didn't promise steak mm-hmm. every night. Mm-hmm. He said, like, there's a reason we make macaroni and cheese, right? Like, like you can eat that and you can be okay. 
Um, and we could probably debate that, right? But as Christians, <laughs> one of the things that, that really stands out here is, okay, for those who believe, you know, that they don't want to get the immunization for whatever reason, again, it goes back to this story as far as how much do we push that, right? How, how vocal do we get with that, right? So again, Paul could have just taken his beating, gotten released, walked out, and been like, hey, look at somebody came to know the Lord. It was all worth it. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't. Instead, he makes them come and release him, right? He he pushes this whole thing. And mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, some of us have been taught over time, like, well, that's not really Christian. Right. Right? That That's not right. really what you do as a Christian. Rub somebody's nose in it, in a sense. It's, it's exactly. It sounds to yep. me a little, a little bit vengeful, like mm-hmm. a little bit like, uh, here we go. But really what he's doing is holding them accountable, yeah, it's right? It's really relevant. Yeah. So how do we, in this area, how do we, again, you have this non-immunized people and these immunized people all come claiming to be Christians. Mm-hmm. But what we're seeing is this divide, mm-hmm. right? And we're seeing people start to name call, get frustrated with each other, get disappointed, get mm-hmm. all of these things. And, and it... It seems like the appropriate thing is for those who are not immunized to just kind of go below the radar and shut up and not say anything, right? Yeah. Which yeah. is really what we've promoted in churches. We've promoted yeah. don't ask, don't tell. Yep. Right? Yep. But what is our responsibility? What What should we do? If we believe strongly, like both of you laid out a case for, it's my body, and I want to be really careful what goes in. If we believe that strongly, if we believe that we are the temple of God, Mm-hmm. Right, we need that, and that's a whole package spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Mm-hmm. Then, then why are we not pushing this? Right, we, yeah. we, we push subjects like premarital sex, mm-hmm. right? We, we want you to, like, hey, you, you need to be pure, you need to be, but when it comes to things like this, we're like, mm, let's just kind of hide from this whole thing. Well, because yeah. the other side's pushing it, right? You know, the Christians who are vaccinated, they're really shoving it in your face, right? Who like they're attacking the Christians who aren't vaccinated. And, but I think it's just another layer of revealment through this last two years that God's been putting us through this whole thing is, like, it's, it, it's, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller mm. and smaller. The church, the remnant, right? It's just like, oh, we're going to sift through this group, now we're going to sift through this group, and now this group, and you're left with this much. And I, to me, that's what it is. Like, I, from the very beginning, there were X amount of sheep and X amount of goats, Right? I mean, that's just the truth. Yeah. That's the truth of, of life. Like, Jesus says it all over. He says, when I come back, will I even find faith? He says it in Revelation that, hello, I'm outside knocking. You're, I'm not in your church, mm-hmm. right? The Laodiceans, he's not there. We have pushed him out. So mm-hmm. so how if we've pushed him out, how's the Holy Spirit filling all these people in the churches? So to me, it's just been a sifting process of of revealment and and like hey listen like these people they they've got this long suffering time that he's letting them have to make the right choice and this has nothing to do with the vaccine this is nothing to do with the vaccine because every single one of those people you have to talk to and you have to find out why did you get the vaccine yeah and the reasons are ridiculous the reasons are, well, because this person's holding my grandchild hostage, or uh, this job makes me do it, or uh, the church person gave me a funny look. Well, those are horrible reasons to inject something into your body. Horrible yeah. reasons. I have yet to hear like a really good sound, I prayed about it, God really led me this way, reason for getting a vaccine. Yeah, I think some some people do, and you know, I haven't I haven't run into any people proclaiming to be Christians that are really um, hammering on the the mm. unvaccinated, and maybe that's um, kind of what we need to do is is a church is, is is have some unity among us, even though we're a mix of vaccinated right. and unvaccinated, and you know be able to have a conversation about it, or just be able to not have a conversation and not make it an issue and and go about our our jobs of, of gathering to worship and, and caring for one another I find I think what you just said is fascinating because mm-hmm. you know the church has always been a mix of vaccinated and unvaccinated that's true yeah. like, like always we've been we we so funny have people in every single church that have decided for years not to right. get vaccinations how many kids yeah. of theirs are homeschooled just because yep. they won't vaccinate their kids yeah so, and but it's exactly that. what you said. We should, if we're all Christians, mm-hmm. right? 
we should all be able to have division in certain parts of our life that have nothing to do with our faith and still be together as the body of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm saying. It's a revealment because that's not what's happening. Yeah. I'm thankful you haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> but we have seen it. Yeah. So it's and I'm sure it's you know, it's just gonna grow and fester and it'll it'll it's probably happening everywhere, but that's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's the revealment, is that's not what's happening. People are, are going nuts with this thing. And it, it's not like a hey, I love you, we're the same. It's a we need to, you know, attack and divide and separate and you sit there and we sit there and you know, kind of thing. Well, I think that on either side of this, I think, you know, the truth is we need to hold people accountable for having a thought process, right? So, again, if, if you're getting vaccinated, you ought to know why you're getting vaccinated, not just somebody told me to. Right. Yeah. And if right. you're not getting vaccinated, you ought to be able to say something that that articulates why you aren't, right? right? It can't be about fear. Mm -hmm. It can't be about scared. It can't be about those kind of angry. It has to be about uh, ultimately Jesus, right? What does Jesus say? What what does he want, right? And again, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's really tricky and it plays into seeds in the fact of like, these kind of discussions. We don't like to have them. Mm -hmm. I love down here at Drash Ministries that we get to have these because we have all kinds of different people and they like to discuss things, yeah. right? But, but most people don't get to have, they're not having this discussion at work in a nice way. Right. No, you're fighting. <laughs> right? Or you're, or you're being forced to have to right. try to figure out whether you want to keep your job or not. So, yeah. listen, Garrett, closing thoughts before I let Summer wrap this whole thing up. Uh, when it comes to vaccinations, I think we're all, like you said, going to have a different perspective on it. Um, but we should be able to give uh, an explanation one way or another. And I know that my feelings on it might be, or probably would be very different if I were um, 30, 40 years older, you know, then the cost benefit becomes a, a, a you know, a different calculation. Um, but I think one thing you don't hear about in terms of COVID is how many reinfections, if any, are we seeing from people that have naturally contracted and um, gotten over the disease versus the amount of people we are hearing about a lot of what they call breakout cases yeah. of people that are vaccinated and then getting COVID anyway. Well, I don't know what you would call, I guess just reinfection, but the fact that um, the the mainstream media and the mainstream you know zeitgeist as it is has been pretty silent on any, I think if it were happening, if people were being reinfected that had had it and got it and over it again, we would certainly hear it yeah. because they would be hammering on that to, you know, this is why you should get your vaccine too, because natural COVID immunity doesn't last. I have a feeling that maybe natural COVID immunity might be the best thing. And that's kind of where I'm at. You know, I, I, I don't want to get it. I'm not out there like trying to find infected people to, to hug and, and kiss and all that. But I feel like the best way for me long term to deal with it would be to get it, get over it, and then rely on that natural antibody that my body produced. That's awesome. All right. Close us out. This you special edition nothing? of Seeds. And I want Garrett to have wow. the last Gosh. official word. So what happens when you bring a guest on? You know, you you have to treat them. Speak less. No, not really. Very it's hospitable. Always... Yeah. So nice, isn't he? Well, guys, uh, seedlings. This might sound complicated, but it's not. It's actually a good seed. It's very simple. Um, if you're a Christian, you say you're a Christian and Jesus is number one in your life, then every decision that we make, whether it be about vaccines or anything else, should be about Jesus. So. You need to pray. <laughs> you need to pray first about every decision that you make, all the decisions, vaccine, jobs, family, all this stuff, everything we do every single day. You have to pray about that, and you have to seek Jesus on what you're doing. You have to be obedient to him first, then the worldly authorities, right? So if he's telling you, mm, nope, then don't worry about the worldly authorities. May you end up in jail? Yep. May you end up in some other bad situation? Yep. Unfortunately, that's just how it goes. <laughs> um, but we've, we've encouraged you in the past in those things that, you know, 
at least God warned us that the this is how things happen. When you do things for him, you conflict with the world often. Um, but you can feel safe in the fact that he's going to take care of you through it. He's going to be there with you through it. Uh, he'll be in jail with you if that's where you are. And and it's you're not in the pit alone. <laughs> You're not in the pit alone, and everything will work out, and everything will be okay. And you may get your reward for that now. You may not get it till later in heaven. But just uh, stick to that, mm-hmm. and just stick with Jesus, and just keep him close, and everything will be fine. And don't worry about what everybody says. You are not here to please man. You're here to please the Lord. So we love you guys. Come back next week, seedlings. Thank you, Garrett. Welcome. For dealing with me and Andy. It was great. <laughs> on his show. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Have a great week.